Hi all, I have another fascinating game of Magnus Carlsen in the Sicilian Sveshnikov to show you. This is against David Navarra, played in the Gashamov Memorial, just this year, 2019, in April. So e4 from David Navarra, we have c5, so the Sicilian defence, a fighting move, knight f3, knight c6, d4, c takes, knight takes, knight f6, knight c3, e5, knight b5, d6, and now on move 7, Navarro chooses the World Championship popularized move here, knight d5. So this early knight d5 instead of bishop g5, which used to be uh, the most often used pass, uh, move of the past in general. For example, this position where white has knight d5 and bishop takes as two major options. But knight d5, knight takes, e takes, knight b8, and David Navarro adopts the Caruana style a4 move so this leaves that parking space for the knight for knight a3 to c4 it's got some interesting upsides this move a4 as well as clamping down potentially b5 bishop e7 bishop e2 both sides castle knight d7 king h1 now uh, we have a6 knight a3 and magnus actually sort of uh, locks down the queen side with this move it compromises b5 but that lock on the c5 square for a knight to go there and use that square without being kicked later is very interesting it also of course fixes a4 sometimes uh, which is useful in its own right and uh, we've seen from the neural network game yesterday that in end games these dark squares might be good for the king to march on later much later in this position there was a key interesting high level stem game with f5 believe it or not, Nakamura playing white against Boris Gelfand in London 2012, which uh, saw actually Boris Gelfand uh, winning that game. Uh, so that went, I'll just show you a little bit of it, f4 for Nakamura, very sharp. And now knight e5. And yeah, black had an interesting position and went on to win from there. Uh, that was in uh, 58 moves. So interesting uh, position there. So a5, veering away from Boris Gelfand's move, f5. We have f4, f5 now, knight c4. And now we here we have b6. So this seals up that b6 square. Maybe white's going to build up with bishop e3 in any case. Rook a3, this is a very, very interesting use of that third rank. Very creative. Navarra is a very creative player. There are no pawns on that third rank. So it seems as though this is potentially uh, quite nifty and useful. We have here Magnus playing e takes f4. You'll notice in this position there's actually a pawn majority on this side of the board and a forcing move sometimes is useful for trying to grab dark squares g5. In this case d6 is under fire though. So knight c5. Uh, this would have to be considered very carefully, especially with the rook being able to swing to g3, though. So it all depends on the position in question. So knight c5, protecting d6. We have actually a very interesting move here now, rook e3. This is a bit committal. It encourages uh, an extremely forcing continuation. Maybe it does represent a slight slip-up, maybe something uh, milder and... <laughs> is is more uh, appropriate but uh, he went for it with this it's threatening uh, rook takes e7 and bishop takes d6 so trying to undermine d6 by taking out that kind of virtual base of the pawn chain the e7 bishop uh, on rook h3 by the way in fact the a4 pawn could just be taken uh, so that's not either a, a particularly amazing move if there's no concrete attack on this h file so there are other moves in the position though, so this is kind of provocative. It provokes an extreme reaction from Magnus and probably a necessary reaction in this particular position. So can you guess what Magnus plays here? If I give you 500 points to find the best move here, black to play. Okay, very, very sharp move, g5, yes. Uh, if black had played knight takes a4 here, then the aforementioned rook takes e7. It's going to be very pleasant for white, especially after d6, big advantage. So g5, trying to question white's setup. Uh, if the bishop goes back, it didn't, then it runs into f4. 
and that also means the f4 is shielding d6 let's get get black gets a big advantage there so after g5 white's basically compelled to play rook takes e7 and it becomes uh, a strange position indeed g takes f4 this rook is actually trapped here black has got a bad structure you you might think but the rook is trapped it's only got the e6 square to peg itself into as an exchange sack so curious yes a very curious position um taking on e6 is probably best done as it's done with knight takes to leave a light square bishop on the board to put pressure on d5 we have d takes bishop takes e6 rook takes f4 so is this completely mad this exchange sack outcome uh, so if knight takes d6 queen f6 it turns out is actually not a bad move safeguarding the diagonal and also hitting b2 this might actually be taken quite usefully so this position uh, black's going to be fine better so we have uh, rook takes f4 and now uh, the knight is just taken actually bishop takes c4 you might think this is actually quite dangerous isn't it uh, king h8 whilst the rook is uh, with the queen on f6 this is not mating queen d4 otherwise it would be we have uh, g4 being played queen f6 so offering a pawn sack here very interesting so but it's looking at b2 this is a very interesting move looking at b2 indeed we have c3 safeguarding uh, that pawn and the diagonal grabbing some squares there if rook takes f5 queen takes b2 is very good actually it turns out for black this position the queen can play to check and take care check take this guy and black's winning so um we have actually c3 safeguarding b2 queen e5 queen f1 rook a e8 is played uh, so it's a very very interesting position the exchange up for black g takes f5 uh, rook takes f5 suffers from a weakness of the last move neglecting e4 black can use the e4 square and this is overloading white so if queen g2 for example we could just take the bishop if queen f3 then actually uh, taking here is just winning the rook uh, if king g1 then actually queen takes g4 undermines the rook so this is absolutely winning for black so uh, g takes f5 rook f6 queen f2 queen c5 protecting b6 king g2 so black is the exchange up in this end game check queen c5 king g2 and magnus takes the queens off can he win this end game is it really that tricky uh, so if we count pawns one two three four one two three four five it's only a pawn for the exchange rook e4 targeting potentially a4 bishop e6 yes already uh this is interesting so white gives up the a4 pawn here to try and get some stability uh king f3 and get the king in king g7 rook d2 we have king h6 rook takes d6 king g5 rook d8 rook h6 check king f6 rook b8 rook takes h2 rook takes b6 king g5 so still the exchange up for one pawn uh, only so black's doing very well f6 white doesn't want to go into the discovered check and ask the discovered check has to safely take this ball not with the king uh, just to put that on the board uh, as uh, it seems as though bishop d7 check will be winning that rook so the safe way is check and now this king is hitting that rook so they both protect each other going after that pawn we have check here going after a5 uh, so potentially but that bishop moves a4 keeping that pawn it's good to do damage to white's pawn chain with a3 here c4 king g6 c5 a3 and in fact this is a really nifty move a3 um black's doing well anyway uh, but it's more awkward to play rook f8 because of c6 perhaps this is slightly more awkward but black's still still doing very well in theory but this is much clearer actually a3 after b takes h5 it creates actually some potential uh, mating 
opportunities. Rook b4 is played. If bishop d1, then we can see actually off the check, uh, rook d4 hitting the bishop, that actually the king is getting into trouble like this, for example, where the two rooks are, are combining for a classic ladder sort of style checkmate, for example, like this, mating. So that's very dangerous. So we have actually, after h5, rook b4, rook f8, bishop d1, rook d2, bishop f3, rook d3, nasty pin. And this actually enables black uh, to cash out in this position off the check. Rook takes, taking here, and black is actually winning here just in time after bishop d5 with h3. Because after rook c5, yeah, rook takes d5, dragging the king back on a checking square for black's pawn. That extra tempo is important. And here the game ended. If it continued up to c7, then check and queen b7. And the quickest way for black to win here is actually uh, to play king f5 and then king f6 allowing the queening for this nice checkmate if c8 then there's that nice checkmate so and here if king uh, d7 then actually king e5 getting this position where actually king d6 avoids the check after a queen it's only the knight but that's a bit hopeless to under promote well on queening here then queen e7 checkmate so yeah, I'll take you to the game ends. So that was a very interesting example just this year of Magnus with the Sicilian Svezhnikov. He's been winning lots of games with it with the black pieces. So it is a really uh, representing a new exciting way to play with black, which we, we've all sus suspected as club players. I think club players haven't been playing the duller openings uh, like in like the Berlin. But club players like their Sicilian defence and have, have done, I believe, Throughout most of uh, chess history, the Sicilian defence has been uh, popular all the time. So Magnus is playing it with uh, Black in the in these high level tournaments with great success. There's a free short and sweet uh, course by Magnus Carlson at Kings by by I am Chess Explained rather, <laughs> using latest technologies to examine a lot of the ideas of Magnus Carlson games and sometimes improve on them in the openings a little bit uh, where where possible. So that's at Kings Crusher TV slash Magnus. A lot of free training variations to check out and learn some of the resources and finesses and ideas fundamentally of this great opening, which I have really enjoyed playing even as a child. And Magnus, yeah, he's revisiting it. It was one of his childhood weapons as well, as well uh, greatly. So it's great that he's revisiting it. I, I love it that uh, the Sicilian has been revitalized. Okay, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks very much.